So game week one has been and gone, but now it's time to look at the stats, look at the fixtures, and see how we can optimize our points coming up next. What's up guys and welcome to JNA United, bringing you the best in football news, entertainment and games. And today we are doing the first episode of FPL Today after a game week has been played. So it's episode number two. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe. And I apologise about my parents, but I've just woken up and I'm trying to get this video out because we've got the nieces and nephews around and they sleep in this room. So I need to record now. So if this feels a bit rushed, I apologise about that. But we will start with my team how did i do in game week one well i actually managed to end up with 66 points which isn't too bad it's not groundbreaking it's not exciting it's pretty much middle of the ground but it does mean i'm in the top 100k from the very beginning which is a lot better than i started last year average points for the game week were 44 points the highest point total was 104 so well done to whoever got that and my official game week rank is 94,870th. The star men for me were Aguero, captained him, he managed to get a goal off a penalty. Lamella did pretty well getting a goal off a header. Hazard also got a penalty goal and Ben Foster came up big with a clean sheet. All big point scorers for me as well as Mares also getting a penalty. So I got all the penalty takers uh, in my team this week. The downside is I could have had Etienne Capoe in my team but I put him on the bench thinking, you know what, he's just my cheap midfielder and he proved me right, he does get runs into the box and he does score. The thing is though guys, in the JNO Classic, that puts me really low. I'm only 155th, which means a lot of you had a really good game week this game week. And in my head-to-head -head leagues, in the old school league, I'm 5th. New school league, I'm ninth. so the new school guys have definitely been listening to what I've been saying. If we have a quick look at the dream team, some names got in there that I wasn't expecting. James Collins being one of them. I made a joke on Twitter that I wanted James Collins to score a five goal haul, uh, imagining no one would have picked him in the side, but the top person of the game week did pick him in the side. Um, he managed to get a goal. The best midfielder of the week was Coutinho. What a game he had. In my personal opinion, I don't think he will keep that up, but if you had him for this game week, you're very happy with yourself. But let's look on to next game week, game week two, and we have to be very careful to remember to have our teams ready by Friday. I believe it is a deadline of seven o'clock. Let me just check that. Yes, it's a deadline of seven o'clock, so we have to have our teams ready by then because the first game is on Friday at eight o'clock. So make sure you have your teams ready before Friday, seven o'clock. The big games of the game week are Man United versus Southampton in the first game on Friday. First Friday game for a while as far as I'm aware. Man United are looking good but Southampton look like they could give them a better challenge than Burnley did. Then we have Stoke versus Man City. Again, I'm imagining Stoke will also give Man City more of a challenge than Sunderland did. So I think this will show us a lot about the makeup of the Man United and Man City side. We have a massive game in the Saturday late kickoff. We have Leicester versus Arsenal. Arsenal's defence has been poor. Leicester's defence hasn't been that great either. Maybe it's going to be another massive goal haul. And then Super Sunday's looking a bit lacklustre as far as big games go. But West Ham are playing against Bournemouth. So if you brought Payet in, it was a positive sign that he came on off the bench. Hopefully he'll be fit for you by Sunday. And then a big derby of Sunderland versus Middlesbrough. That'll be interesting to watch. And I bet you the Sunderland fans really don't want to lose to the new Premier League boys. But now we've got that all said and done, here are the parts of the show you've probably been waiting for. We've got Captain Choice of the Week, Differential of the Week, and the Red Herring. But before we get into that, we just have a quick look at the best players from Game Week 1 that you may want to consider putting into your Game Week 2 side. And there's two teams we're kind of focusing on today. We've got Southampton and Liverpool. Both came up with some midfield talent that could score you big points this season if they can carry on their form from the first game of the season. Now this is only the first game of the season so this could be a blip, it could be just one really good game. So don't read too much into this, but 
Off of the game week one stats, we have some players that really stand out. One of them is Dusan Tadic. In Southampton's game against Watford, he actually managed to get seven crosses, two of which were successful. Managed to get three through balls, creating six chances for his side. He had four attempts on goal. Only one of them was from inside the box, but he did have two shots on target. All in all, he's shown that he could be an integral part of that Southampton side and could get goals and assists. But then we also have Nathan Redmond, classed as a midfielder in FPL, playing up front for Southampton. And the manager sounds like he wants to keep trying that out. Redmond created four chances for his teammates, had five attempts at goal. Importantly, four of them came from inside the box and he scored. So Nathan Redmond's looking like a very good cheap midfielder. And then we shift to Liverpool and boy, do we have a lot of choices here. I'm going to start off with the one that's not obvious, the one which isn't that tempting and isn't that flash, and it's Adam Lallana. Adam Lallana created five chances for his team, getting one assist. He had two attempts at goal, both coming from inside the box, one of which was on target, and he scored. So great return from Adam Lallana in the game against Arsenal. Firmino, while he didn't get on the score sheet, did have four attempts on goal, three of which came from inside the box. Downside is none of them came on target, but... I'm assuming that will change. I still personally think Firmino will be the best choice from that Liverpool team, apart from maybe Mane. But we'll have to wait and see because Coutinho showed that he could be a main factor this season. Coutinho had three attempts on goal, two of which were from inside the box, but all three attempts were on target. I'm sure you all saw that free kick. And he managed to score a brace, so that is perfect for fantasy football managers if he can keep that kind of performance up instead of uh, being very inconsistent and being very injury prone. Then finally we have Sadio Mane who had three attempts on goal, all of which came from inside the box. Only one was on target, but that one shot on target was a goal. So we have plenty of options in that Liverpool midfield and they looked pretty damn good to be fair. And that brings me on to my captain choice of the week and I think we've got to look at the Liverpool players seeing as they're coming up against a Burnley side that were one of the teams that conceded the most shots on goal from game week one. But I think we also have to look at Chelsea because Watford also conceded an incredible amount of shots on goal as well. So for me, it's between Hazard, Mane and Firmino. I know Coutinho had a great game week last game week. I don't think that will be repeated regularly. And my pick is going to be Eden Hazard purely because I think he's the one most certain to have a good game in game week two. Now, I did watch the West Ham Chelsea game. Unfortunately, I do feel like Eden Hazard switched off after he scored. I'm hoping that doesn't happen against Watford, but I think Chelsea should get lots of chances against that Watford side, and hopefully Eden Hazard can be involved in the goals. And for my differential of the week, I'm actually looking at a Swansea player. Swansea are coming up against Hull, and I know Hull beat Champions Leicester, but they didn't exactly manage to stop Leicester having many shots. Leicester just weren't that convincing in front of goal. Hull conceded 9 shots inside the box and 9 from outside the box and I'm looking at Fernando Llorente as the differential for this game. Now I would have looked at the wingers but they don't seem like they have nailed on wingers at the moment and I think Fernando Llorente is nailed on, crosses in the box, I think Llorente could get some goals. Whilst I'm recording this he's currently owned by 3.1% of players which makes him a great differential and in the previous game he had 6 attempts on goal, 5 of which came from inside the box four of which were on target. So I think he definitely could be the leading man for Swansea this season who could get you some goals. And for the red herring of the week, I think it could be Man City's defence. I'm surprised I'm saying that, but Stones has only just come in and has been put straight into the team alongside Kolarov. And he's got the fullbacks experimenting coming into the center of midfield. So I think they've got a lot of learning to do there. I think they're also asking a lot of the keepers and I'm not sure Joe Hart and Caballero are ready for the responsibility of being a ball playing keeper. So their game against Stoke, away at Stoke, not 100% convinced their defence will keep a clean sheet and I think a lot of people are looking at John Stones especially as a cheap defender in a good side that should get clean sheets. I think they will eventually, I'm just not sure they will do it in game week two. Anyway guys, I've not sorted my team out yet, as I said, I have recorded this quite quickly, but if you want to see my side, make sure to follow my Twitter, I will release it before the game week starts. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always, I've been JNO, you've been awesome, and remember, it's all about the game.